Hello everyone, what's going on today? So before I go on to the next uh, video, uh, I'll give a little shout out to uh, Babe Fred Beardies. Uh, he's into teeth just like me and reptiles, so he only has two videos, so he has an like, excellent review on Ken the Bug Guy. So, today's video, I thought we should continue on with the uh, Mythbuster videos, uh, the series. So as I promised, we're going to uh, do the um, OBT, which is the Chilis um, Moranus, but this will also apply to all the other members of the species, uh, you know, like the L, no, the P. Lagardi, the Four Hall Baboon, and the P. Gordatus, which is the um, Kilimanjaro Baboon, which I do not have. Anyway, so I guess uh, we'll get started the same procedures like in uh, previous Mythbuster videos. So. The common name for the OBT, <laughs> this is why I don't like common names because it doesn't really accurately describe the spider, but I've seen a lot of pet stores label them as the following. Um, they label it as Usambara baboon because it's a species that does come from uh, Usambara in Africa. Sometimes they call it the or Usambara orange baboon. Uh, some people call it the orange baboon tarantula which nicknamed the OBT and also with good reason OBT because it's orange bitey thing because it's a very aggressive specimen okay so the Latin name uh, Ternachillus moranus now you do have to be careful with uh, the Latin name because there exists two species that have the whole name so uh, there is one called the Ternachillus uh, TCF and then RCF. So the TCF is the tan color form. Whenever you see CF, that means a color form. Uh, the Turnchillus moranus sometimes, if you don't label them, they'll refer to TCF, which is the tan one. Um, the common name of this one is the Mombasa Golden Starburst Baboon. It looks like the OBT, except it's not red. So if you want the red species, the red form, you have to have this one right here. This is the only one. So try not to confuse uh, the two. Um, the like I said, the for the four hall baboon, it's going to be a Ternachillus uh, lagardi, and for the Kilimanjaro mustard, it's a uh, Cordatus. I'm sh not sure if uh, this holds, uh, but the TCF has a been reclassified as um, Ternachillus um, meridianus. I'm not currently sure about that, but um, take it from me. So here is the pronunciation of the Latin name Ternilochillus murenus and Lagardi and Cordatus. So should be pretty easy to figure out. So the P is silent, so Ternilochillus murenus. There we go. Okay, now the cost, the availability, and the size. Okay, so the size, uh, they're actually pretty big for a Ternilochilla species. Um, I'm assuming uh, six to seven inches is not uncommon for one. Uh, Lagardi is probably the smallest one of the three. I think they get it to having a four and a half inch leg span. I do have an adult female. And the Cordatus, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in between uh, the two. I don't own one, so I don't know exactly um, how big one gets. So uh, about the cost and availability, uh, OBTs are pretty much can be seen in exotic pet stores. Sometimes uh, they'll ca carry in the odd end OBT next to the B. Smithy and the Pinto and the G. Rosea. So prices generally uh, they're pretty cheap for uh, for a baboon. Um, 15 to around $60 is pretty much fair game for an adult female. Anything over 80 bucks is considered to be overpriced for at least the uh, P. Moranus. The P. Lagardi will range you, let's see, I'm giving the prices. I paid 15 for mine, so I'm assuming 30 bucks for an adult female is. Um, fair game and for the Cordatus it's a little bit more expensive because it's slightly more rare 
so I would probably assume around uh, 70 to 80 so certainly not over a hundred okay so now uh, care sheet humidity and temperatures and enclosure setup okay so this is pretty much what I have for uh, trenchula species so this is my Lagardis tank and this is my Moranus tank so I don't want to disappoint uh, don't mean to disappoint you but I'm not going to take out my uh, specimens <laughs> out uh, so if you look at my previous video that I did, uh, Tranchula Feeding Video 56, there's my OBT. We'll give you an example of how fast she can be and that's why I don't want to take her out. So see there's my name. Ooh, she's fast. Very fast. Well, unfortunately she escaped on me. I found the lucky bee, but uh... She ain't very, very happy at me. And this is your typical threat posture and typical OBT nature. Yeah, so you could tell that OBTs are very aggressive. And you can hear her stridulating. And you can see the way she's moving her fangs. Gives like a stridulation organ and you could probably yeah, see not very happy. that uh, she has a little bit of venom dripping from her fangs. So this is Tranchula feeding video 56, that's mine. I'm leaving her alone now. Yeah. Oh, gee. So that's pretty much why I'm not going to take out my specimens. So, <clears throat> uh, standard critter keepers are pretty much the basic needs for one. Um, substrate, I probably recommend giving you a bit more substrate uh, because some of them are burrows, but burrows, but they do have like a semi-terrestrial uh, arboreal uh, tendencies. So, if you just keep it like have a cave, have maybe something to crawl on, I'm sure it's going to be fine. And this is my Lagardi, she's a pet hole. Uh, so yeah, she's right there. She's about four inches. Her name is Star, so I do have older videos. Just look up uh, P. Lagardi on my YouTube channel for more information. She really hasn't grown very much uh, since I got her around two years. So lifespan expectancies for uh, these species. Um, Males will probably live around three to four years and probably less than a year after they mature. I do remember uh, my mature male uh, that died around eight months after he matured. Females will probably live around 12 to 15 years. So it's a fast growing species. So uh, in that time frame, you'll have a, an adult female. Okay, so uh, cage and temperature humidities. Um, keep them very dry, they like them very dry, so I would keep a water dish available at all times and mist once in a while, probably like once a week should be sufficient. Temperatures, as you know, I keep the room 82 in the day and then 77 at night to um, give a sense of time. So handling and temperament, well if you saw the, just seen the video I just uh, showed you, uh, this is not a handling species. These are very aggressive and they will bite. Some species are so hostile that uh, even if you look at them funny, they'll start uh, biting. So, <laughs> not a good tea to handle. Uh, as far as breeding is concerned, it's uh, fairly easy. I'm sure, uh, assuming that they get around 200 to 300 babies. So, recommendations and overall review. You know, it's uh, can't complain. The orange ball of fiery fury. It's the uh, classic tarantula to get in one's collection but you do have to understand that uh, these are old world species these are very aggressive not to be handled and to be treated with respect because it is a dangerous uh, species as well this one here uh, the OBT uh, cousin the P. Lagardi this one I actually recommend for like an intermediate uh, because even though that they're in the same genus uh, the Lagardi isn't that terribly aggressive so uh, it should be um, fairly easier to deal with than the OPT. <clears throat> so my best advice guys do research. Research is very important before you buy a tarantula. I can't imagine how many people buy the OBT just because uh, they buy on impulse and then they find out that why is it so aggressive. So an example of um, one I'll show it to you. Uh, let's say here, take my black border racers. Which one stands out? Well, of course, this one here because of its curvy nature. 
So I'm buying this because it's cool. So uh, that's pretty much what impulse buying is. So always do research before you buy your specimen. So I uh, can't imagine uh, not doing the research properly and not taking care of the tea properly. Uh, be bad news. So I hope this uh, Mythbuster video helps. So uh, next Mythbuster video I'm going to be doing is uh, going to go to a slightly rare tea. Uh, the Thrixopalma ochre tea and the P. metallica. Why? Because uh, I'm giving them away very soon, so I personally think it's uh, fitting and right to actually do Mythbuster videos uh, in detail as uh, their final video. Alright guys, so uh, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.